In the last lesson, we used if-else statements to handle situations where we had two possible cases. In this lesson, we look at using if statements in situations where we have more than two cases, for each of which we have written a set of instructions, but where only one of these sets of instructions will be executed. In this example, let's suppose our program has stored an integer between 1 and 10, and we want the user to guess the number. The user enters a guess in the text box and clicks the button to check if the guess is correct. Let's try some numbers to see it working. So if we enter 3 and click the button, we get a message saying our guess is too low. Let's enter 8 and see what happens. Click the button and we find that our guess is too high. So let's try a number between 3 and 8. Let's say 6. And in this case, we found the number that our program has stored. We see that our attempts have generated three different outputs, which represent each of the possible cases. When we compare the user's guess with the program's number, it may be smaller than the procedure's number, as was the case with the 3, or it may be bigger than the procedure's number, as was the case with the 8, or it may be the same as the procedure's number, in which case we have the correct answer. The simple if-else structure, which we met in the last lesson, cannot deal with this example as it can handle at most two possible cases. So here we are going to use an extended version of the structure which allows us to test a number of conditions until we find the one which is true and in that case we'll execute some instructions. So let's go back to the code window and write the code for our procedure. As you will see I've already written some code for the procedure. On the first line, we have two integer variables declared. The first of these, num, is to hold the number that the procedure stores. And the second one, guess, is to hold the value entered in the text box by the user. The next line simply clears the contents of the list box each time the button is clicked. The line which reads num equals 6 is assigning the value 6 to the variable num, or if you like, placing the value 6 in the num variable or memory location. And remember, this is the value which is stored by our procedure and which will be compared with the user's guess. The next line, guess equals txt guess dot text, is storing the value entered in the txt guess text box in the variable guess. So, when the button is clicked, the value 6 will be stored in num, and whatever value the user enters in the text box will be stored in the variable guess. Now we need to write some code to compare the value in num with the value in guess and display an appropriate message. Let's check first if the values are equal. So we write, if guess equals num, then and if the two values are equal, or in other words, if the condition is true, then we'll display our message correct, well done. If the values are not equal, then we can check another condition to see if the user's guess is less than num. And here we have used else if followed by our condition which reads guess less than num. And if this condition is true, then we'll display an appropriate message. For example, we'll say that the user's guess is too low. If neither of these cases is true, then the user's guess must be greater than the procedure's number. This is captured by the else case, which indicates what should be done if all the previous conditions are false. So in this case we display a message indicating that the user's guess 
is too high. Now let's run our procedure and try a number of different guesses. As we have written the code, we know that the number stored by the procedure is 6. So we'll try three different values, one less than 6, one greater than 6, and 6 itself, just to check that each of the three cases in our if block is working correctly. We'll begin by entering 4 as our guess and clicking the button to check it and we find that our guess is too low. Now let's look at our if block to see what has happened. The if block begins by checking if the value in guess, which is 4, is equal to the value in num, which is 6. It isn't, so the condition is false, and we move to the next condition. In this case, we ask, is the value in guess less than the value in num? 4 is less than 6, so the condition is true, and we display the message, your guess is too low. Now we'll try a value greater than 6, let's say 8. So we click the button to check, and we find that the guess is too high, as we would have expected. Let's go back to our if block and see what has happened in this case. Again, the if block begins by checking if the value in guess, which this time is 8, is equal to num. It's not, so that condition is false. And we move on and check the next, next condition. Is the value in guess less than the value in num? Well, 8 is not less than 6, so this condition is false. So as both of the conditions are false, the program executes the code in the else part of the if block. In this case, it displays your guess is too high. As we know, that if the guess is not equal to or lower than num, then it must be higher. Finally, let's try 6 and click the button. And we find that our message says correct, well done. Again, let's look at our if block to see what happened there. The if block begins by checking to see if the value in guess is equal to the value in num. And the value in this case in guess is 6 and the value in num is 6, so the condition is true and the code is executed and we display correct well done. So our program seems to be working as we intended and dealing with the three cases we identified.